Welcome back. Today in the Keep On Testing Spotlight, brand new from Yuwa, the 982.3 micro soldering station. <laughs> Yiwa, pretty popular name in the soldering realm, in the electronics realm, period. They've been around for quite a while. Sometimes I have really good success with this brand. Other times, not so much. It really is hard to predict. Uh, I think the quality control in the past hasn't been so great. Hopefully, in this case, it's done better. What we're looking at today is a micro soldering station, 982.3. Uh, this is the 110 to 250 volts, so it is a switching power supply. And you have a choice of, in this case, two hand pieces. We've got 106A right here, which is the equivalent of the 115. Now, this only puts out 30 watts, so it's not a super powerful um, output. That being said, it's going to be used for micro soldering, for cell phone repair, what have you. It should be enough. And over here, we've got the 40 watt, the 210 equivalent. For some reason, you want doesn't label these, um, you know, they have their own like 706A. What the heck does that mean anyway? But this is the 210 handpiece. Um, this puts out an additional 10 watts. So 40 watts peak power for the 210 handpiece. Let's get a couple of tips from you that are included with this particular package. This is the 210 tip, C210 uh, precision soldering tip. This is branded as the Yiwa. And as well, we've got a really tiny C115. This goes on to the little 115 handpiece, obviously. Now, here they're labeling it 115. Why don't they just call this the 115 instead of, you know, the 106? But uh, anyway, also get a couple of these holders that go on either side of the soldering station like so. I'm not a big fan of these. They tend to get in the way. Uh, if I need an extra pair of hands, I'll call my mother-in-law. Well, no, I won't. She lives in a different country. But anyway, um, yeah. So, I mean, they're there if you want them. If you don't, you don't. You will also includes this soldering stand. Now, you don't get the solder, unfortunately, just the stand with the plastic roller. But, you know, it is metallic and it does seem to be pretty sturdy. So, I mean, if you don't have one, if you're just starting out in the game, might be a, might be a good idea. Oh, oh, yeah, that, that broke. That was from AliExpress and it, it shipped like all messed up and yeah anyway so yeah you get the stand but not the solder first look so it's a pretty good looking station um it's not light it's not heavy it's you know it's pretty well weighs what you think it would this is all plastic here we have a a, a, a plastic underlay here is it's basically all plastic uh with this sort of um i don't know what the heck that is metallic overlay here uh, but uh, the main corpse of the body uh, is plastic this is non-adjustable this is the holder for your iron goes in like so now you got to be careful because if you're not careful you might you know Put it in the wrong way and it's going to fall and it's going to go right into your display right here and put a big hole in it so um yeah trust me when i say i know what i'm talking about over here we have our tip removers holders just like that to remove the tip and if you want to install the tip tip and insert it into your iron like so and because these are micro tips they can break you know they're not as strong as a 245 or, or a larger tip so you don't really want to start you know banging them down and pushing them down because you're going to screw up your tip so so don't do that just and you can just put that little peak hole right here tiny bit of pressure make sure it's good and yeah you're good to go let's turn the unit on shall we Yiwa logo on the boot up takes about two to three seconds getting the heating element not detected because i don't have the one plugged in at the moment two plastic switches here one will control the temperature as well as another is the selector to change the different settings all right so i've attached a 210 handle once again we get the boot logo and this time we don't get any error messages power c210 you can tell we've got our 
designation for the type of handle that we're using. It's going into sleep mode right now because we are still uh, basically have the iron parked. And set temperature is at 200 degrees Celsius for sleep mode. But you got to admit, that's pretty fast to boot iron out. And boom, we have 450 degrees awfully quickly. Definitely quick to boot and quick to uh, come to temperature. Display itself, not the largest out there, but verbose enough to give you the info you need when you need it. Easy on the eyes, and uh, I guess you could call it a color display, although the colors do seem to be slightly muted. Okay, so right now we have that 210 tip inside the unit. We should be pulling about uh, 40 watts if this is holding, holding true to the specs. So let's find out. I've got the power meter set up. We're going to take this out of sleep mode into the water. You can see we've got full power going now. And we're actually pulling closer to 50 watts. So uh, isn't that interesting? Over 50 watts of power coming out of here. One more time. You can see the power indicator on the unit itself as well. Definitely all the way. We are like maxed out here on the meter. And once again, we're pulling over 50 watts. So we are definitely true to that power rating. In fact, uh, according to the specs here, we are actually over what we're supposed to be getting. Um, 40 watt, 210 handpiece, uh, 40 watts rated power. So we're getting about 10 watts more, a little more juice from the Iwa than we expected. And that's, uh, well, that's probably a good thing. By the way, I can't stress enough just how important it is to make sure if you're using this particular unit, when you seat the iron back, make sure you hear that click. Because if you don't, if you just do this, uh, it's going to fall. It might burn your cable. It, it, it's really a little on the problematic side. So make sure it is in like so. Looking at the tip to ground resistance now, we should be looking at under two ohms. And indeed, we are getting under two ohms. 1.2 ohm tip to ground resistance. Also looking for that earth to ground continuity looking good. Silly me, somehow I put it on the top, rested it in. So I thought uh, I came back a couple of minutes later and it was sitting here completely destroying my Yiwa. Uh. Anyway, um, I had to order another one. My fault, right? So practice makes perfect. Won't do it again, but just be a little vigilant. And that's why I'm saying that. Never was a big fan, obviously, of having these displays sitting right under the tips. Um, ideally, you want it more off to the side, just in case it does fall or have a little accident. It's not going to fall right on your display, but okay. I am going on and on about this. I'm over it now, honest. All right, so here we are with the old and the new. And oh, hey, you know what? A perfect way to do a teardown, right? I think so. PCB display just slides right off, and we're looking at the HC32L13X 32 arm bit Cortex microcontroller slash LCD controller uh, slash does a lot. This is powering all the goodness of this display unit. Nicely done, I gotta say, they've done a very good job in terms of uh, soldering with such a small space. And uh, once again, no flux, no nothing. So flux is not good, flux is evil. Flux turns into corrosion. So good job, Yuha, in giving us a clean PCB. K1 and K2 were the presets for temperature as well as selection. And this is where that starting iron fell and literally burned a hole right through the display. Ugh. Um, that being said, though, considering this was sizzling for a couple of minutes, uh, it stood up pretty well. But uh, yeah, it was irreparable. Here we have the main power part of the assembly. Of course, we have some chokes going over here, some filtering capacitors, and everything was grounded nicely. We have our mini transformer because, yes, this is SNMPS, um, switchable power supply, and uh, you know what? I'm liking it. I got to say I'm liking it. Um, Triac over here, and basically, I mean, this is it. This is it. They, they put everything into a tiny compartmentalized space. And they've done a really good job. A little more high-end caps over here. Um, but, you know, it's, it's it's nicely done. SMDs on the other side. And once again, it's a clean board. Uh, no residue, no flux, what have you. 
nice and clean. And we have some space as well here, some uh, protection uh, in terms of heat and sparks and what have you. So, and just give you a close up of that triac. These uh, three terminal semiconductors are excellent for controlling current. And that's why we see them everywhere, especially in the world of switching AC applications. Um, yeah, we have a nice heat sink on it as well. Anyway, good job. All right, let's put it back together and do a little bit of soldering. Here we're looking at the Iwa 982, the big brother to the 982.3. More powerful, this one boasts 120 watts uh, and a lot more. Anyway, stay tuned for that full review coming up shortly. Okay, you can do a little bit of micro soldering quickly here, just to give you a little lowdown of what the iron is like. I've got the C210 handle right now, the C210 tip, of course. These are the genuine Iwa, Iwa handles, tips. Um, you can get them third party. Uh, Iwa quality for tips seems to be sort of middle of the road. There's definitely better out there, but I mean, it comes with the station, so why not? There I am burning some solder now, and uh, we are ready to go. I've got a uh, nice, big IC here. It's a PQFP44 package and got that knife tip here along the side. Of course, I had some flux on this beforehand. I get it in there just so. Now, one thing, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I screwed up. Uh, take a good look and yeah. Uh, anyway, so the pin, <laughs> pins are not completely aligned. Uh, on the one side, if, if you see it there at the top left, it's it's not it's not copacetic. Yeah, right there. Ugh, sorry. Anyway, I didn't feel like taking it apart and doing it again. Uh, but anyway, you get the idea. Definitely capable uh, doing pretty well anything micro soldering wise. And um, here I'm attaching some uh, little capacitors, SMD style capacitors. Uh, I think that these are 0805s. And um, yeah, no worries. I always put a tiny bit of flux on, uh, whether it's the paste or the liquid. And you know, you can just dab that tip with solder. You don't even actually have to put the solder on the PCB. And uh, just as long as it's wet enough, it doesn't take much. Hey, these are tiny little SMD components. And I mean, it looks pretty big on the microscope, but if you were to, you know, put these in your hand, uh, you barely see them. So very, very tiny uh, components that we're working with here. Anyway, no brainer, super simple. Um, and the iron performed perfecto. It's really great when you're dealing with microscopes and uh, micro soldering. I mean, that's what it's all about. Uh, if you don't use a scope, you probably don't need to micro solder. Um, it just makes it so much easier. you got a lot more room underneath that lens. And, uh, you know, it's just the way to go. Here we go. We're going to take a look at the temperature accuracy. Got the Hako out. And uh, let's see, we're going to be set to 400 degrees Celsius. I have not calibrated this, Yiwa. It is straight out of the box. Here we go. And we're moving up. And we are pushing 400. There we go. That was fast. 405, 406 degrees. Oh, that is just about perfect. Now we're gonna take a look at the power in the little Yua. I've got this hooked up to a temperature thermometer on the sand meter, and we have the tip in solder, and I've got some Capcom tape uh, holding it on at the end. This is about 150 millimeter piece of copper uh, wire and uh, well, a plate. Anyway, let's go. Let's see how hot it can get after 60 seconds. I'm kind of interested in this. Here we go. And we're starting off now. Got to get that uh, tip. Now, this is a tiny tip. Um, wow. There we go. Finally got it in place, and it's uh, not doing much. So uh, still sitting at 21 degrees Celsius. Remember, we've got 60 seconds, one minute, to see how hot that uh, tip at the other end can get. Okay, we're approaching the one minute mark now, 55 seconds. And there we go, 25 degrees Celsius after one minute. Let it go another 10 seconds. We'll see just how uh, that makes a difference or not. Probably not. And we're gonna stop it now. So 26 degrees Celsius was the max after 70 seconds and after one minute, 
60 seconds. We got a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Now remember, this is a tiny tip. So I wasn't expecting a whole lot of thermal mass to be coming out of here. I mean, take a look at this tip. Yeah, not much uh, thermal mass at all. So, you know, that being said, still for micro soldering applications, what have you, I think this will suffice. Hey, if you love the sleek design of the Yiwa 9823, you're going to love the Axon T380. This is one cool soldering station, battery operated. I'm telling you, battery operated doesn't even need uh, a, a charging, uh, nothing. It's so cool. Anyway, I'm going to be reviewing this one soon. Stay tuned for that. Closing thoughts on the Yiwa 9823. Yes, this is a great little station. With its compact design and decent micro soldering performance, it offers a lot of value without having to spend a lot of cash. Now take note, I've only tested the iron with the C210 and 115 tips. Apparently, there's a 245 handle available as well, but I haven't tried it, nor, and this is the weird part, can I even find a four pin compatible C245 iron from Miwa or any third party seller, even AliExpress, ah, no can do, couldn't. But if you have a C245 iron with this station, tell me about it in the comments below. Hey, I used the 210 iron almost exclusively this couple of months while testing. And I gotta say, it performed pretty near flawlessly. Now remember, this is a micro soldering station. It's not designed to solder massive ground planes. So if you do more audio amplifier work than let's say cell phone repair, you might wanna look at a different station. Yeah, it's rated 40 watts, but I consistently got 50 plus. That's still a far cry from a good 100 watt plus station that you'll need for those bigger jobs. But as long as you know the station's limitations, you'll do just fine with the Yiwa 982.3. The Yiwa 982.3 gets an awesome four out of five stars. Yeah, it's cheap, and it's a great way to get into micro soldering without selling the dog. Sorry, Hugo. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one. Keep on testing. To calibrate the U1923, simply hold the plus and minus buttons together. Hold down for two seconds. See the calibration interface here? Now we simply can adjust. Five degrees difference. Once again, hold them plus and minus down. And we're back to actual temperature. Simple as that.